Hello everyone. Hi, my name is Ellen Croft. I'm Vice Principal at Ashfield Academy. Uh, this is an academy in Leicester City. I'm also the Director of the Inclusion and Scent Hub, supporting schools in our localities with their scent provision. Um, today I'm here uh, to really talk to you a little bit about our assemblies that we do here at Ashfield Academy uh, and the main focus on our sensory assemblies for those learners with profound and multiple learning difficulties. Um, I fully understand that the context of every school will be different. Every school is unique. The children within your school setting are unique. Uh, so I do want to talk to you a little bit about the guiding principles of the assemblies, but I fully understand that you might want to make adjustments, adaptations, all of that, those really, really important things that you do to make it work for the children in your school. It's about meeting individual needs and you will know your children best. So some guiding principles for me today as some examples that I'm willing to share with all of you and just to hopefully excite you about it because this made a really big difference to the children in our school. Um, because when we were looking at our children, especially those um, from our PMLD cohort, and we're talking roughly about 50 to 60 learners out of a cohort of 160 children, we really felt their levels of engagement during a very uh, traditional assembly were very poor. And we felt like we can do better for this group of children. So we decided a, a different approach to this, which I'm really happy to share with you today. So as, as my example today, I will use this little light. Uh, this is an assembly that, that was kind of the first assembly that we uh, developed in a series of uh, assemblies, uh, really to meet the unique needs of, of those children. Um, it was really important to us, not just to launch this and here we go, let, let's do this. It, a part of this was very much about uh, the getting the buy-in from our entire staff team around this, because to be honest, uh, a sensory assembly, what does it look like? What are the expectations uh, from our staff team? What do we want the children to learn from it? It was really important that we made that really explicit to our staff, uh, because we wanted to get this uh, right for everyone involved, because kind of letting go and uh, entering into this kind of non-verbal uh, assembly, very much, very child-led, uh, well, wasn't easy. It was a bit of a, okay, well, we need to make this work. What are we going to do about it? So before we did any of this, we had to kind of discussions within our class groups, what we wanted it to look like. So I wrote up the guidance for you, something uh, as a consideration, and you want, might want to expand on that guidance within your school setting. But this is a starting point from us. And we're hoping to continue to develop this within our school setting as well, because, OK, we, we might have got it right at some point, but the needs of our children change. Uh, so again, it's something that we're always looking at and improving and making different again. Um, so here we go then. What I'll do is I'll take you through the slides, uh, add commentary to the slides, maybe some helpful tips, best practice, um, so that you can either start writing your own assembly, start off with using ours, that's all fine. Um, in the comment sections on your slides, I will have provided links to the music that we provide within this assembly. Again, something to listen to. Is this right for your school? Use it. If it isn't, again, please feel free to then look at other kind of uh, platforms to find the most appropriate uh, music for uh, the children in your setting. Again, we were able to hold these assemblies in our main school hall. Um, you might only be able to do this in the classroom. So again, um, yeah, adjust and adapt. But just to set the scene, we delivered these um, assemblies in our school hall with roughly 50 to 60 children. 40, 50 members of staff. So again, quite a big operation, but uh, it does work for us. So it, it's really uh, something that yeah, you have to figure out yourself how it will uh, work best in your school. So 
Let's take a look then. So what we did is, first of all, um, and, and part of the um, kind of the instruction and the training that we provided for staff, um, we gave them some training first. This was a slide, however, that we did always have up in the um, at the start of assembly because we felt it was important and we went through it every time because sometimes new staff joined us or there were supply staff uh, there uh, and sometimes just the busyness of every day uh, it was just a really good opportunity to again remind everyone in that kind of special place that we were got a space that we were trying to create for our children just to adhere to uh, some of the following um because really what we want to do when the children enter the uh, space of the assembly, we want to create an atmosphere yeah, that is inviting, that is welcoming our children into that safe space where they get that sense of belonging, that sense of uh, being together as part of a big group of people, that opportunity to celebrate them. So we really wanted to steer away from making it a very... Uh, I'm coming into the space and now I can hear staff around me still trying to set things up, lots of operational talk. We really wanted to be ready, the space to be ready for people to come in, sit down and instantly feel immersed in the environment and the specialness of that. Yeah, so our instructions to staff really was, this is a pupil-led assembly. Yeah. And we're going to adjust our communication to the needs of the children. Yeah. It is not about what we're saying. Yeah, It's about the feeling that we're providing for our children as part of this assembly. So we use, and a lot of our staff will have had the intensive interaction training. So we use a lot of the intensive interaction strategies during uh, this assembly. Yeah, Because really, we try to keep our uh, communication to a minimum. Yeah, so again, we did have a few key words that we might repeat, but again, we try to limit it to make sure that our, the environment is very well understood for our children. There are no barriers. We're not putting up barriers for our children to engage with the environment and the people within it and the resources that we present. So again, key words, intensive interaction strategies. A big part of our uh, assembly was about exploring the resources, yeah, and of course, connecting to the people around it. So we need to provide children with time, yeah, so the right pace, but also to explore some of those resources as independently as possible. Yeah. But of course, well-skilled staff, if a child struggles with this, yeah, we of course support them as well. Then we also, we focus on one stimulus at a time. So we really made it very clear in our presentation, we present one object at a time or one stimulus. Yeah. And when that is finished, we put it back in the box. So it gave real opportunity and real value to that one experience at that time, rather than lots of things coming a child's way. Also within the assembly, and if you are going to develop your own assemblies, it's finding that balance between very active and lively and those calm moments of reflection yeah, that we can take time to contemplate, to process, to respond to what is happening around us. Yeah, so all of those things were really important. We then agreed with our staff some nonverbal signifiers if there was a transition between the slides. Yeah, so that might have just been a finished, yeah, or it, it, it could be a, a next, whatever you want it to be, even if it's ringing a little bell, whatever you felt was most appropriate for the children in your school uh, to, to kind of uh, get, yeah, getting children ready for that transition. Um, and we also felt it was very important if things are going well within assembly and you see lots of children respond to a certain stimulus. Yeah, you might want to extend the uh, experience a little bit longer. If things aren't going so well, and you, you, the, well, for whatever reason, you might want to reduce the time that you spend on a slide. Yeah, ultimately, it's child-led. 
child-centered. So that's how we uh, go and how we roll. Yeah, so uh, again, I might put in the slides two or three minutes. Well, you might want to spend four or five. Again, child-led. Uh, another very big uh, aspect, uh, because it's very heavily resourced, these assemblies. Uh, it's taken a lot of time for staff to gather all those resources. So we were very, uh, and as part of being part of that community, that we were all responsible for ensuring that all the resources were returned neatly into the boxes, uh, because that would save us um, time for the next assembly, yeah, so that everything is prepared. It also allowed us that uh, to um, reuse some of the resources. Yeah, so uh, we, we had things that we use for assembly A, and we could also use it for assembly C. Yeah, again, something that we could uh, reuse again. And the children then become more familiar with the resources as well. So that is also a great opportunity to, yeah, for those learning skills and memory skills and all of those things that children need uh, for learning. And, and just the little things like returning chairs at the end of uh, assembly. Yeah, again, without big fuss, just calmly returning it. It might meant taking the children first out of that kind of special space that we're trying to create an environment and then a few a couple of member staff coming back to return and, and tidy up the chairs ultimately we want people to have fun together to enjoy to be in celebrations together so we want these assemblies to be great fun and an opportunity to celebrate so as part of our assembly we always put in a, a slide like this yeah, and that really depends on your school routines and what you do within your setting around recognizing and celebrating children's achievement. But we always did either that a certificate was handed out or several certificates, or uh, if there was a child's birthday, we would uh, celebrate it uh, there as well. So this is then... Um, part of that. So we start with this slide. This was the slide we would have up at the start of um, the assembly. Yeah. And, and there was lots of nice uh, relaxing music playing to create really that ambience. Yeah. Then we would very quickly go through the uh, slides just as gentle reminders. I would just put it up there as a visual and ask staff to take a look. Yes. Yeah. Again, you don't need to speak. You don't need to say the wording. Yeah, then we would do that celebration slide with the um, a picture of a child if it was their birthday or just the names of the child. And we would sing happy birthday to children or a big clap if we handed out certificates. And then we would go back to this slide, this little light of mine. Um, and what we would do is we would really have that relaxing music on. And just as a moment to regulate or co-regulate with the children, really take some time to relax, enjoy the music, take notice of the children around us, our environment. And sometimes this was two, three minutes just to create that calmness. Yeah. When we did that, then there was a change and it was visually presented there for staff. They could see that change. And we would change the music as well. And uh, in the comments box on your um, assembly slides, there is a link uh, to a, a song that is sung with this little light of mine. And we would just listen to it. It was about 52 uh, seconds and we just listened to the song. No one was talking, just listening. And we were listening out Yeah, if any of the children were vocalizing yet. Yeah, can we hear them sing along to the music, vocalize along? Yeah. And we would pause the music and give time, yeah, in quiet for children to start responding, vocalizing. Yeah. We would give time, maybe another minute, two minutes, just sitting there in quietness. Acknowledge if a child started vocalizing turn the person who was sitting in the circle with the, those children, turn to them using intensive interaction, acknowledgement, I can hear you, you're singing along, you're responding to the song. Yeah. Then we would play the song again, yeah. and staff would quietly sing along with the music. 
Yeah. So this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. However, if your child started to vocalize to the song, yeah, you would sing and vocalize and use those intensive interaction uh, opportunities with the child. Yeah. So at this stage, you would hear some staff sing, some staff listen to the children and um, applying those intensive interaction strategies with the children. Yeah, so that was really tuning in to what comes next. So now we're going to get several slides with different sensory experiences for the children on the comments box again in your um, uh, slide pack. Yeah, you will see uh, what resources are needed, but this little light shines. So we would have a, a small LED candle. Yeah, we would switch it on. And as the room, because when we set up the room space for this assembly, we make sure our curtains are drawn, the lights are off. So it's quite a dark assembly. Yeah. And what we would do, we would switch on the little light. So the whole space would light up with these uh, little candles. And what we then would do is um, activities like tracking, yeah, left to right, up and down, near and far, and sometimes just holding it there. Yeah, a child could see if they could reach for it and, and just trying to kind of get that engagement that time. Yeah. So we would explore two or three minutes. Again, make your assessment of that when you're in the space as the assembly lead. Yeah, because uh, often what we would do is we would have one person in charge of these assemblies. So in this case, I developed this assembly. Yeah. So for the next six to eight sessions, I would lead that assembly. So I was always at the front of the assembly overseeing what people were doing. And then if I thought, OK, I can notice some rumblings or engagement is dipping, we might go to the next thing. So at that uh, moment, I would have a signifier, yeah, finished. A uh, staff would put place the object back in the box and we would start singing this little light of mine again. And we would just sing it. We wouldn't listen to the recording anymore. As a staff team, we would all sing this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine. So you would sing that all together. And then we had beans. So again, from the box, we would get our torches. Yeah, and some children were able to switch them on independently. Others would need some support. And we would shine beams around the darkened assembly space. Really good fun. Again, opportunities. We would have uh, pieces of white and black card uh, or any kind of thing that might be uh, reflective and uh, we would shine our beams on there. Yeah, so again, something to explore, two or three minutes. Again, finished, we would put back the uh, torches into the box and start singing this little light of mine. This little light of mine sparkles. Yeah. For this activity, we had on our iPads, the fireworks app on the iPad. Not only does it visually make it's lots of fun. It makes lots of popping and fireworks sound. So again, we would let children, of course, we didn't have 50 iPads in there, but for each group, we would ask every class to take two or three iPads to the assembly and we would let children explore. And it was always quite spectacular because you hear fireworks popping everywhere in the space. Again, you make a judgment as the assessment leads. Are we ready to move on? Yes finished, place back the iPads in the box, sing this little light of mine, and then this little light of mine, it shimmers. Yeah. For this activity, we had bought uh, pillowcases. We used it since for all kinds of other activities. So although it was initially a bit of an investment, we then got um, shimmering uh, pillowcases and children could explore it and we had it I think in the mermaid so it was green on one end blue on the other and uh, children were given time to explore the shimmers yeah and the sparkles I could imagine you might want to do you could do even in a bottle and 
give that a good shake and all the glitters would start going up and down. Whatever you want to do, of course, you can make adjustments to it. Again, that same routine, finish, back in the box, sing the song. Very little uh, spoken language at that time. Again, very much child-led. Our eyes are on the children. Yeah, how are they engaging? Yeah, are they enjoying themselves? Again, we adjust and make do and we, we, we utilize what is happening within our uh, groups. Then again, you would do the uh, finish, putting it back in the box and then um, this little light of mine and then a uh, close. Well, this is quite a bit. Uh, and you might want to do something different, but for us, we bought lots of glow sticks and environmentally, you have to question that, of course, so you might want to look at alternatives, but we would break uh, glow sticks, yeah, and we would place them as little bracelets around a child's hand, again, or you might want to introduce something else, UV, yeah, but we would do uh, glows with glow sticks, again, you as assembly lead would see what is the engagement for the entire space. And then uh, the uh, people within the smaller circles would make those judgments based on what they were seeing with the children they're working in. And uh, yeah, uh, again, once that was finished, we did the same routine again, finish back in the box, sing the song, and then this little light twinkles. So we would have a string of... Um, uh, fairy lights, yeah, and we would kind of roll out that string either between children, we put, put it over their laps, behind wheelchairs, so the whole space would fill up with lots of um, uh, fairy lights, yeah, again, you make it work what you want it to be for your children, but again, uh, it was really, really pretty to observe and see and how children were engaging with that. And this is then the last slide. So you can see about five or six experiences with different types of lights. And then uh, again, we would signify finished, the resources go back in the box, and then we would sing uh, this little light of mine again. And then we had a moment of uh, reflection and a positive quote. So this was very much uh, nothing can dim the light that shines from within. Yeah, and we would take a moment to reflect on, on this by Maya Angelou. Yeah, and then kind of uh, to signify the end of the assembly, we would have a prayer of love, peace and light. Again, the link is uh, in your comment sections on the uh, PowerPoint. Um, but we would really take this just to, to give time for quiet reflection. Just sit peacefully for two, three minutes. In quietness, children would be um, responding, they would be vocalizing, yeah, and uh, they are, are talking, but mainly uh, vocalizing, and uh, or some were very quiet, some children were asleep, so it, it was really different, but really that opportunity to just be. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, I would signify uh, again that that was finished and then slowly staff could take the children out of the space. Yeah, um, I would, because in that space I had a dimmable light, so I would slowly turn up the light settings. Yeah, so it, it went from a very dark space to slowly a little bit lighter. I never went to full beam. Yeah, and then uh, just coming out of that space, that would then signify the end of that assembly as well. So hopefully that's been helpful to you. I, I really uh, think that um, the impact of it, it's given all of us lots more confidence to do something different with our children. Yeah, something that we traditionally were taught to do in one way. We're now doing it in another way just to meet the needs of our children. What I will provide for you is that guidance um, and please, I would love to hear from you any feedback so we can improve and de further develop what we're doing here. I've provided uh, several of our assemblies that were developed at Ashfield. Again, I would so very much 
welcome uh, feedback because uh, I, I think uh, together as a community we can do so much about it so if you wanted to share or any of your assemblies again something that we would really welcome and, and appreciate yeah so thank you all very much and uh, hopefully I'll see you around at some conference or anything online. We're always very happy to meet with people, exchange ideas. So please do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much.